Hi, this is Section 2.6. I'm dividing real numbers, and we are on page 103. And we're going to start off here today on page 103 with a little vocabulary um, and a property that we have to know with that vocabulary. It's called the inverse property of multiplication. And the inverse property of multiplication basically says this. If you multiply reciprocals together, you'll always get one. Okay, now when you think of inverse, inverse has um, a relationship to the word reciprocal, which we'll get into. But ju just to show you this, um, that when you multiply reciprocals together, you always get one, um, let's look at the word reciprocals and what that means first. Okay, the reciprocal means that we're taking a number, like if you think of 3 over 1, and we're basically flipping it into 1 third. So reciprocal is a simple concept. It's something that you've already been taught before. But if I multiply reciprocals together, I always get 1. For example, 3, the reciprocal of 3, think about 3 as 3 over 1. 3 over 1, its reciprocal is 1 third. If you multiply those together, you get 1. Okay, so the inverse property of multiplication just simply says if you multiply reciprocals together, you'll always get one for a response. And remember, a reciprocal is simply taking a number, flipping it. Um, that would be the reciprocal of that number. Like 1 8 times 8 is 1. You can notice if I take the reciprocal of 1 8, if I flip 1 8, I get 8 over 1. 1 8 times 8 is 1. Okay. Um, the reason reciprocal um, is related to this property is the term multiplicative inverse um, basically is another way of saying reciprocals. Okay, so the inverse property of multiplication is simply saying if you take reciprocals and multiply them together, you always get one. Um, you'll be asked about reciprocals in your homework. Like in numbers 3 to 10, they're going to ask you to find the multiplicative inverse of the number. In other words, that's just fancy math speak for find the reciprocal, okay? If it's a question like number 9, where you see negative 4 and 1 third, what you're going to need to do there first for number 9 is you're going to need to change negative 4 and 1 third into a top-heavy fraction. That'd be negative 13 thirds first. So that's the same as negative 4 and 1 third. And then now we can take the reciprocal. Now we can flip it into negative 3 13. So the reciprocal of this, I'll just put a little arrow, would be negative 3 thirteenths in number 9. Okay, so next, let's talk about dividing without a calculator. This is, this is material I would make you do without a calculator. Okay, there's a simple rule for division that we should know, and it's simply this. If you take A divided by B, that's the same thing as taking A times the reciprocal of B. All right? That's simply the same as taking A times the reciprocal of B. I'm not sure why this is not erasing, but it's not. Okay, so anyway, let's look at an example of that. Like, let's think of 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. I could get the answer by taking 10 times the reciprocal of 2 also. 10 times a half is 5. Now, you might wonder, why would I want to do that, Mr. Lemansky? 10 divided by 2, that's pretty simple. I know the answer is 5. Why would, you, why would I even want to change that to 10 times a half? Well, for a simple problem like that, you're right. I probably wouldn't either. I would just do 10 divided by 2. Okay? But what happens when you have something like 13 divided by 4 and 1 third? This isn't so simple. I don't know what the answer is off the top of my head. But if I use this simple rule, I can make it into a simple multiplication problem that I can easily do. Okay? So let's do that. First of all, I don't want negative 4 and a third. I'll make that into a top-heavy fraction. I don't want to divide with mixed numbers. So I'm going to change this into 13 divided by negative 13 thirds. So negative 13 thirds is the same thing as negative 4 and 1 third. Well, now I'm going to apply the division rule. I'm going to quickly multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take 13 times negative 3 thirteenths, 
And now before I multiply all this out, I see, hey, I got an easy cancellation. I have 13 on top and 13 on the bottom. If I divide each of those by 13, I get 1s. And this is easy now. This is 1 times negative 3, which is negative 3. I'm not sure that I would have seen that with trying to divide it. I can easily do it by multiplying it. Let's just do some examples together in your book because this is one of the main things we will be doing in the homework is dividing without a calculator. So in 19, I'm being asked to do negative 4 sevenths divided by negative 2, negative 2, or I guess I could say negative 2 over 1 in this case, okay? And I did actually write it out as negative 2 over 1. I think it's easier when you think of it as a fraction because I'm not actually going to divide. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So you can see I did that. I have negative 4 sevenths times negative half. And then before I multiply this out, I'm going to ask myself, do I see any common factors in the numerator and denominator? Yes, I do. 2 and 4. I can divide each of these by 2 and get 2 and 1. Well, now this is easy. 2 times 1 on the top is 2. 7 times 1 on the bottom is 7. I get 2 sevenths. And negative times negative, of course, is a positive. The sign that you get, this is probably a good time for me to talk about this. How do you tell when you divide if the answer is positive or negative? It's very simple. Use the same rules as multiplying. Remember in my video for multiplying, if you have an even amount of negatives, the answer is positive. Well, I have an even amount of negatives in this problem. You can see them right here. I got two negatives multiplied together. That's a positive answer. If I have an odd amount of negatives, if I have one negative in my division problem, it would be a negative answer. So very same rules as multiplying. If I have an even amount of negatives in my multiplication or, or division, it's a positive answer. If I have an odd amount, it's a negative. That's why this answer turned out positive. I had an even amount of negatives. I shouldn't have had all these layers turned on. Let me turn them off. Okay, um, let's talk about this real quick. A, a real easy fraction, 1 plus 3 over 4. I had a little question for you here. Is this the same as 1 quarter plus 3 quarter? Well, think about this. I have 1 plus 3, that's 4. 4 over 4 is 1. Is 1 fourth plus 3 quarter 1? And I'm sure you're coming up with, yes, it is, okay? So in other words, it's legal to take a fraction where in the numerator I'm adding or subtracting um, terms and to separate that into separate fractions and just use that denominator in each of those. And that's important because when you do a question like 37, again, the calculator isn't going to help me with 37. They want me to simplify this. Okay, well, the easiest thing for me to do is, is think of this just like I explained here. Let's break this up into separate fractions. So I'm going to break this up into 5 tenths plus negative 25q over 10. Now, I, I should go back real quick over here and watch when I unclick this. This was a subtraction. One of the biggest things I worry about is sign mistakes. I can always change subtraction to addition. So if you notice, I'm going to hit this little button here, and I just did. Now the reason I did that is now when I, when I, add, when I add and I break this up into separate fractions, it's going to be easier for me to know that, hey, there's a negative sign here. Okay, well now it's time for me to reduce these. Well, 5 tenths is a half, and here, can I divide 25 and 10 each by 5? So I did. So I have half for my first fraction plus, remember, negative divided by positive is a negative. I have 5q over 2. I just simplified this. I have 1 half plus negative 5q over 2. I guess I could write that. If I really want to write it out nice at the end, I could just put 1 half minus 5q over 2 now. Okay? Or in 38, I should have not had all these layers on, sorry. Okay, here's the problem. I don't want to make sign errors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the opposite up here. I do not want to forget signs. So I added the opposite. Anytime I subtract, I can add the opposite. We learned that on a previous video. Okay, I'll break this up into separate fractions then. I'm going to have negative 18 over negative 12 plus negative 21 over negative 12. 
I want to simplify this. Well, 12 and 18, I can definitely divide each of these by, let me see, 6. And here, 21 and 12, I can definitely divide each of these at least by 3. And when I do that, I get 3 halves here, divided each by 6. And when I divide by 3, I'm getting 7 fourths. And remember, negative over negative, this is going to end up being a positive, And negative divided by negative, this will end up being a positive. I'm going to get 3 halves plus 7r over 4. Okay? And I think I covered all the major things I want to cover then. All right? One other quick thing I guess I could mention, if you look on page 106, 106, they ask us to find the mean. Okay? And when we talk about mean and math, remember, mean doesn't mean walking up to someone and punching them in the nose in math. Mean stands for average. Okay? So when I'm asking for you to find the mean, I'm asking you to find the average. And remember, average, to get the average, we add up all the numbers in our set and divide by how many numbers there were. Like when you look at 24, I see three numbers in my set, negative 10, negative 8, and 3. I would add those three numbers up, uh, negative 8 plus negative 10 plus 3 um, gives me, what, negative 15. And then I would have to take negative 15 and divide it by 3 because there were three numbers in my group, and that gives me negative 5, and that would be the mean or the average for these three numbers. Okay? Um, that should be enough to get you started on Section 2.6, Dividing Real Numbers.